daily readings from the buddha's words of wisdom edited by venerable s dammika the buddha's words of wisdom buddha vachana word of the buddha daily readings from the sacred literature of buddhism edited by s dammika published by the buddha dhamma mandala society first published 1989 cover designed by eric yo for over two millennium the discourses of the buddha have nourished the spiritual lives of the countless millions of people in india sri lanka burma and thailand this book contains extracts from some of these discourses selected from the pali tipitaka and also from some post canonical writings rendered into readable english presented so that one extract can be read and reflected upon each day year and provided with a readers guide this book is an indispensable companion for anyone trying to apply the buddha's gentle message to their daily life venerable sravasti dammika was born in australia in 1951 he was ordained as a buddhist monk in india and later lived in sri lanka where he became well known for his efforts to promote buddhism in 1985 he moved to singapore where he now acts as spiritual advisor to the buddha dhamma mandala society and also teaches at the education department's curriculum development institute venerable dhammikas other books include good question and good answer matrechas haim to the buddha and gemstones of the good dhamma preface whoever attentively reads a small number of the countless speeches of the buddha is soon aware of a harmony in them a quietude of soul a smiling transcendence a totally unshakable firmness but also invariable kindness endless patience as ways and means to the attainment of this holy quietude of soul the speeches are full of advice precepts hints Herman Hesse The goal of the Buddha's teachings is freedom freedom from the bondage of passions freedom from the distress we inflict upon ourselves through our ignorance and ultimately freedom from the rounds of birth and death nirvana like the dazzling peak of a snow capped mountain that we can see in the distance but not yet touch the freedom of nirvana lies at the end of a path the noble eightfold path but the path is a long one sometimes smooth and sometimes rough with many twists and turns and if we are to walk it with steady steps and without being side tracks to the buddhist this help comes in the form of the three refuges the buddha the dhamma and the sangha the buddha is a refuge because his life and attainments remain living proof 
that enlightenment is possible that human perfection is the true purpose of life he is the supreme archetype for all who quest for spiritual maturity reflecting on the buddha's life an example fills us with the enthusiasm needed to walk the path the dhamma the buddha's teachings are a refuge because they provide us with a realistic and complete description of reality as well as advice on ethics social relationships meditation and almost every other aspect of life the sangha is the philosophy of the buddha's disciples past and present enlightened or unenlightened bound together by their common commitment to attaining what the buddha attained the sangha is refuge because those who have preceded us on the path can give advice on the journey ahead while those who walk with us can provide companionship on the journey bring us back to the path when we deviate and help us when we stumble and fall while the buddha realized the dhamma and then proclaimed it the sangha aspires to become like the buddha by practicing that dhamma thus we can say that the dhamma is preeminent among the three refuges the buddha himself said he lived dependent on dhamma honoring dhamma respectful and differential to dhamma with dhamma as a banner with dhamma as a standard with dhamma as overlord the buddha attained enlightenment in the year 528 bc and started teaching the truths he had discovered soon afterwards sometimes verbally sometimes by example when he spoke his words were so relevant and clear and often enhanced with similes so meaningful that they were never forgotten by those who were blessed enough to hear them his deeds seems to be such a perfect expression of the compassion he urged others to develop that they too were long remembered 6 month after his attained final nirvana everything the buddha had said and done was committed to memory and like a golden thread passing through crystal beads began to be orally transmitted from teacher to disciple when this oral tradition was eventually committed to writing it was compiled into three huge books and thus came to be called the tipitaka the three collections the first of these books is the sutta pitaka containing the discourses of the buddha and some of his enlightened disciples as well as describing events in the buddha's life the second book the vinaya pitaka contains the rules and administrative procedure for the monastic community the third book the abhidhamma pitaka contains minute analysis of psychological processes dao the centuries buddhist have expressed their reverence for the tipitaka by writing it on golden plates placing its pages between gem studded covers or housing its volumes in magnificent libraries but more importantly they have revered the tipitaka by striving to center their lives around the dhamma it contains they have looked to it for guidance and inspiration and in return it 
has given them peace of mind and purity of heart while pointing always towards the freedom of nirvana familiarity with the buddha's words is an indispensable part of the spiritual life the central axis of the buddhist life is meditation and one of the most important meditative practices taught by the buddha is the recollection of the dhamma dhamma anusati the practice itself consists of selecting a passage from the tipitaka and quietly reflecting on its meaning when this meditation is done every day and with a receptive and reverential attitude the meaning of the words being contemplated will sink into the heart and help transform it at the deepest level to read or hear the buddha's words is as it were to come into direct contact with the buddha himself this book has been specially compiled for the use of those practicing the recollection of the dhamma although anyone interested in the buddha's teachings will find it useful it consists of extracts from the discourses in the tipitaka and also from some post canonical literature arranged so that one extract can be read every day for a year most of the extracts are reworkings based on the pali text society's english translations although some passages have been newly translated buddhist sacred literature contains numerous and frequent repetitions which were so essential during the time when the dhamma was orally transmitted but which most modern readers find distracting these have been removed or condensed but only where they in no way change the meaning my students and friends philip tan fall perguson and wine clean unstintingly gave their time and skills to help prepare this book may we all together share the merit derived from giving the gift of the dhamma and may all who read this book benefit from 